back to Market on Close. I'm Marley Caden. It's time now for a CEO spotlight with C3AI. Shares have climbed 50% in just the last two months, and this week they announced a new task order with the United States Air Force. Let's welcome in the chairman and CEO of C3AI, Tom Siebel. Tom, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Marley. Hi, it's great to have you. Now, let's start off with this task order with the Air Force. What does that entail? Uh, well, <clears throat> we've deployed uh, C3AI predictive maintenance uh, into the United States Air Force at massive scale. This is one of the largest enterprise AI applications on Earth. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're collecting all of the telemetry and all the underlying information systems from all of the weapon systems, F-15, F-16, F-18, F-35, KC-135, et cetera, and identifying system failure before it happens, fixing it before it breaks. Net-net, we're increasing aircraft availability on any given day at the scale of the United States Air Force by 25%. So this is huge. This is uh, one of the largest AI deployments on Earth. Certainly, I believe, the largest AI deployment in the Department of Defense. And it is now expanding. They expanded it at a very rapid rate. Initially, it had a ceiling of $100 million and they increased it to almost a half a billion dollar uh, ceiling for software. And this system we're talking about called Panda, of course, I did a bunch of research ahead of our discussion today. Do you think with some of the details that you just mentioned that Panda could in fact reshape how America's aircraft fleet is both maintained and deployed? Absolutely, I mean, you think A, you know, I think one F-35 costs order of a hundred million dollars. I think. I think when we deploy this application in the next fiscal year, we'll bring up the rest of the aircraft in the fleet for $93 million. So this is cheap. And, you know, for, when we do it at the Air Force, then we do it at the Navy, then we do it at the Army, then we do it at the Marines, then we do it for ships, then we do it for ground-based vehicles. So the same technology will apply for readiness across all of D DOD. And it will be, you know, I think, one of the most uh, efficacious applications of AI in the military industrial complex. So certainly some cost cutting savings here. Does it also increase safety for our airmen? And if you do move into those other naval and army contracts for our armed forces as a whole? Absolutely. We have the equipment is more reliable, so it doesn't break. And so absolutely, the, 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 the mission is going to be more accessible. The airman is going to be safer. There's going to be less collateral damage. But to increase, you know, on any given day, the throw weight of globally of the United States Air Force, I mean, this is huge. Now, I want to speak more macro just about AI. So many people fascinated by AI and its role in aerospace with the Air Force and also just in the defense sector as a whole. How do you think AI is reshaping defense as a whole? Well, we can think about, you know, in the future, we used to move $10 billion things at 30 knots to the other side of the planet. Okay. I mean, this is what we've done in the past. I'm sorry, for the last 70 years. Okay. In the future, we're going to move $1 things that are, that are moving at, in swarm, in hypersonic swarms. Uh, and so it's they're going to be very small form factor devices, drones, hypersonic vehicles, space, cyber. And so what's going on with AI uh, and, uh, you know, definitely changes the nature and the future of warfare. And I noted uh, in one of your reports that you closed more than 50 agreements with government customers last year and also expanded some existing deals with current customers, which include both the Army and the Navy. What are the next steps on those government contracts for C3 AI? Um, more expansion, more seats, more deployments. Uh, focus on uh, um, you know maritime industrial complex shipbuilding uh, is going to be very important. Uh, I think Golden Dome will be very important. Multi-domain command and control, contested logistics. So the military, and, but but also when we get into the private sector, let's deal with Medicaid fraud, Medicare fraud. Let's deal with customer service and health and human services. I think the budget to increase customer service and health and human services is like. $250 billion next year. So this is a natural application of generative AI to be able so people get their questions answered about Medicaid, Medicare, SNAP, food stamps, whatever it might be. 
So you mentioned some of your private contracts, you know, on the private side, outside of the military sector. What are some of your priorities for the upcoming fiscal year on the private side? Well, the private sector represents about 80 to 85 percent of our business. So we're, we're really a private sector company. So manufacturing, supply chain, mining, uh, uh, utilities, uh, oil and gas, ExxonMobil, Shell, ENI, Petronas, uh, consumer packaged goods, that would be uh, protein, say Cargill, uh, utilities like Duke, Con Ed, uh, uh, Precision Health, Life Sciences, GSK, Boston Scientific. So that this is, you know, our meat and potatoes is really in the private sector, okay, in healthcare, in utilities, in banking, in manufacturing, in chemicals, supply chain optimization, demand forecasting, production optimization, fraud detection, enabling people to use AI to deliver, you know, higher quality products at lower cost, on time, in full, into the hands of more satisfied consumers at lower environmental impact. That's what that's what enterprise AI is all about. And I want to move in quickly before we run out of time here, Tom, uh, with your uh, earnings from Q1. I came out late May, you know, top and bottom lines better than consensus estimates were expecting. You're forecasting an increase of 20 percent uh, the current fiscal year midpoint guidance range. Is that conservative, do you think, for that revenue estimate? No, I think that's a realistic estimate. I mean, we've we've been about spot on, I think, 18 out of 18 consecutive quarters. So I think your most uh, your most uh, accurate predictor of what our revenue and earnings is going to be is what we say, because it tends to be accurate 10 times out of 10. So I think it's realistic, but it also takes into consideration the world is a very uncertain place right now. You know, budgets may or may not get passed. Uh, trade bear, trade uh, tariffs may or may not be put in place. Uh, we might have, we may or may not have kinetic uh, warfare going on in the Middle East, uh, in 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 Israel, uh, in Central Europe. So there's a lot of uncertainty out there, and and we've, you know, we have to take that into consideration as we plan our business. Well, we have to leave it there, Tom, but we can't thank you enough for joining us this afternoon. Again, that's Tom Siebel, the chairman and CEO of C3AI. Thank you again for joining us.